Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. In the wake of the tragic terrorist attacks in Paris and of an unprecedented solidarity in the streets of Paris this uh, Sunday, many questions are going to be asked about potential intelligence lapses and how best to counter this new threat. To talk about uh, the issue, Pierre Conessa, who is a former senior defense ministry official here in France, and the author of a very, very recent report on methods to counter radicalism. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Mr. Conessa, let me ask you, first of all, as I said, uh, there was a strong show of solidarity, but many questions are already sur surfacing about potential security uh, lapses, intelligence lapses to detect uh, the terrorists who were, after all, well known to the French security apparatus. Can you see some things that went wrong? Well, it's, it's really difficult to, the, to address precisely your question because, you know, um, I think that the, probably the parliament will probably deliver an inquiry about the question. But the, I would like to in, pay attention to one thing which is necessary to understand. It's impossible today to think that a zero risk policy, anti-terrorist policy is possible. I mean, the terrorism by strategy is always attacking in the part where you are the weakest, which means that, uh, remember 9-11, nobody was thinking that it was possible to organize such a uh, terrorist attack. So, uh, on the same on the parallel, Arakiri, uh, two people were in front of the, the building, I mean, two policemen. And so, with, regarding the, the way by which the attack has, be, has been uh, um, made, it was quite impossible to foresee that it was such a heavily harmed group. And the second point, which seems to me important, too, is that uh, we are no more in a lone wolf scenario. We are today facing more organized small groups which are able, you know, to organize quite synchronized attack. It was the case with the two fair Kouachi and then with uh, Mr. Koulibaly. So um, we have to assess the risk. We have to think about the way to improve our method. But I don't want to make the trial to intelligence services because, you know, to ju just check what the attitude of people like that, for just one people, risky people, you need more than 10 or 15 people to, to just to survey, to intercept communication, etc. So it's very difficult. I understand the, the difficulty. That being said, uh, those groups, the brothers, uh, Kouachi and Amedi Koulibaly, were known uh, for uh, their past. They went in jail uh, for precisely uh, being close to some jihadist cells in, in the past. Uh, they were listened to, uh, they were surveilled. I mean, those were not, like we've seen in previous mm -hmm. instances, for example, Mohamed Mera, mm -hmm. who in 2012 targeted a Jewish school and French soldiers, who was not that well known. In this case, you had clearly identified individuals. I understand you don't want to blame the intelligence services, mm -hmm. but it raises serious questions, and the government itself says, yes, we've, we've had problems. Yeah, but you know, there are probably a new attitude of these kind of people. Uh, which uh, in theological terms is called takia. Takia is the right, the religious right you have to dissimulate what you think because if you have a goal, a further goal, you can dissimulate. This is more a concept coming from Shia, Shia, Shias, but they have been adopted by Sunni terrorists. And uh, the takia means that uh, today it's quite difficult to de detect in jail the radicalized people. They are not wearing any more bear. Uh, robe, uh, they are not high, um, calling for a co a collective prize, etc. Which means that uh, today they are able to understand what are the police methods, so to dissimulate more efficiently. And uh, just remember that in, uh, on the internet we are circulating an interview of a worker who was in touch with Sheriff Kouachi, explaining that this guy was a poor guy which has been in a way um, manipulated. In a way, it was not manipulated. It was just dissimulating that its own goal. And that's a very new attitude. Uh, what's not new, uh, but what seems to have been the case, at least partially, is the role of indoctrinement or at least mobilization inside jails. I mean, we've seen this in the past. This has been talked about 
in the course of uh, doing the report that I mentioned in the introduction, uh, clearly uh, the French jails and probably other jails mm -hmm. are places where lots of things are happening without being detected, this, despite the fact that the prisoners are under uh, surveillance by definition. Yes, you're right. But you know, the um, jail administration today has a very interesting policy to avoid this kind of attitude. The question is what become with those guys after the jail? Because we are supposing after they, they have paid their penalty, they must be reintegrated. And that's a question, what could take in charge this, those guys? For example, um, uh, every sign was let people think that uh, Koulibaly, for example, who was receiving the welcome uh, meeting with Sarkozy, was the a former example, French president. Former French president was example the, the, the case the case of a guy coming from small delinquents, which was integrating it himself. It, in fact, he was not. In fact, he was not. So the question today is, what should we do after the jail? Let me think, uh, and other aspect which seems to me very important. I was discussing with anti-terrorist judge, and they were explaining to me that more than 70 or 80 percent of the people coming back from Syria, which they hear in the, on their uh, on their desk on their office, well, have never been to mosque or to jail, which means that there are other ways of radicalization. And today, the question: if we want to face all the risk, we have to have a global survey of what are the new and what are the traditional way of radicalization today. Well, for, example, for example, when you talk about converted people, they were not in jail. They have been converted just using internet and human contact with who? So you understand? The question today is we don't have to mobilize all the means on the profile of those guys. We have uh, to, to take uh, more, <coughs> I would say, a comp a more compulsory um, survey of everything today and that's a point which must be taken account in the debate which is opening now right because uh, I mean your report uh, basically is saying you know uh, the security response is not enough obviously uh, there's uh, the role for education education within also the Muslim uh, community what uh, concretely uh, should be done to try to de-radicalize or prevent the radicalization of uh, potential uh, terrorist recruits? Yes, my, uh, my duty when I began this, uh, when I began this, um, this report was to take into account what could be a policy regarding counter-radicalization. What should I ask the question like that? Because, you know, in France, in a way, the success of police was so convincing. So <clears throat> we, we do think that it was just enough. And today, the question is no more that, that, like that. The question is what could be the general policy we have to implement to help people, to help us people to, allow, to fight against counter-radicalization. Let me take an example. <clears throat> Since last uh, summer, I have been invited in more than six or seven seminars coming from local Muslim authorities. It could be Imams, it could be a president of local association, and mainly Muslims. And they want to mobilize themselves and all the community against radicalization because they are facing that radicalization. For example, Salafists in some mosques deny the right of the Imam to, to, to lead the, the pride. So <clears throat> this question is very important because it's not possible to imagine that we will implement a global policy against radicalization without those elites. Let me take an example. Our Minister of Interior is not able to deliver a theological counter-radicalization message. So we need imams, we need the Republicans imams, we need association presidents, we need all these people who are mobilized today. Is enough done in that regard by the French authorities or because France is a deeply uh, secular country, the uh, authorities saying, well, you know, we shouldn't <clears throat> go into this business. Do you think that uh, the mobilization of imams of uh, personalities within the Muslim community is probably one of the keys uh, to counter radicalism? Yes, I think that there are two keys that are very important to, to, to keep in mind. The first one is that point, which means that a lot of people want to be associated in the counter radicalization policy. And the second point is the administrative organization of France. Because of secularism, 
the Bureau des Cultes, which is the administration in charge of relationship with religion, religion, is in the Ministry of Interior, which is a Ministry of Police, which means it's not possible to make people think that every imam or every president of association who want to be associated to counter radicalization policy will be regarded by the Salafists as, you know, a partner of police. So we have to change the organization. We have to change the, the relationship with the community. And <clears throat> probably this is a very interesting sociological challenge for France today, because we have to think about and to rethink our conception of secularism. Just last question. Do you think because of all the emotion that's coming out a little bit after the 9-11 attacks in, in, in the US, do you think uh, the public will call for more uh, measures, harsher measures, uh, to fight uh, terrorism that, in the end, are not always proven to be more efficient than the existing ones. Yes, I think that the public opinion will ask for. But the question, the duty of the politician is to think about what could be, what should be the after. The after is not just policy, policy it's just not intelligence service, uh, improvement, etc. The question is also the report between the Muslim community in itself, mainly the middle class of this community, the elites of this community, to share their part in the counter-radicalization policy, as for example, it has been done in England. Okay, Pierre Conessa, thank you very much uh, for enlightening us on uh, new ways maybe to counter radicalism. Thank you for watching this edition of the interview. Stay tuned here on France 24 for more news.